Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at solving a cubes problem, as was left in the comments. This is how to tether internet off of your phone by plugging your cubes device in. And if we happen to plug our phone into our uh, cubes device, and you know how to go over onto your phone and push the USB tether option, what we see on the Cubes device is that the device is available, but when we turn that on, we do not see any internet. So this is because in Cubes by default, of course, depending on how you set it up, but in default in Cubes, then if you have this set up the way their system default is, you have a SysNet, which covers all your networking, and you have a SysUSB, and these are separated so that your USBs can access the network and things like that, which is a security protocol. Now, if you would like to override this, uh, first and foremost, I'll tell you how to do it, but you have to be aware that this is going to expose your USB ports to the internet, and that could raise a few other issues and problems down the road. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and turn off, um, unplug my, untether my phone from cubes. I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is going to give us through a few little, um, uh, we're going to see a few warnings as we do this. Basically what we have to do is if you go into settings on any given cube and see devices, now you'll notice we cannot make any changes to the devices while the cubes are running. But you'll see down here near the bottom, USB controllers. What we need to do is we need to separate the USB controllers from SysUSB and add the one that we want onto your SysNet. So again, this is going to expose those USB ports to the internet. So this will inherently add some insecurities to cubes but if you do need to do that, and that is, uh, that is your system, we're going to show you how to do it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to power off the SysNet, which is going to give us a warning because this is going to shut down all the networking stuff. Uh, there are some cubes connected to it. Do you want to shut them down? Yes, we'll go ahead and shut all those down as well. That's going to shut down everything connected to it, which should be Sys Firewall. The other one we want to shut down as we want to shut down the USB. Now, of course, I'm using a USB mouse, and so as soon as we do this, my USB mouse stops working. We are on a computer, so we want to. Um, I want to make sure that I still have the ability to do something. Uh, I, of course, have a trackpad, so we'll go ahead and do our trackpad. So what we need to do here is you need to go into your settings, and we're going to unassign some devices. Now, when you're looking at USB, many of your computers are going to have multiple USB ports and controllers, and this is really up to you to figure out on your particular computer what you have and where. So I have two USB controllers, and I just did some poking and probing, and what I've determined is that the USB, uh, oh, i got to remember this one, USB 3, I believe, is going to be the side with my two USB ports, um, USB 4 is going to be the, my side with my one USB port. Now, my one USB port is one of these slow reading ports. My th um, two USB ports are my high speed USB 3. So I'm going to keep four connected so that I can keep using the mouse on the slow drive. And I'm going to decouple the USB controllers, which are my two primary ones, from my USB net. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hit apply. Well, you can just hit OK if you want. And then we're going to go ahead and restart the Sys USB. Now we're going to go into our settings over here and we're going to find the USB one that we are using. Oh, there we go. We have our mouse back. Woohoo! I have my mouse back. And that was, uh, okay, that was. Three, I believe, is the one that we uncoupled. So we're going to add this to our available devices over here. So we're going to go ahead and push this and then restart our cube here. And, of course, we want to restart our firewall as well. Now, what I did find is that when you start and stop the firewall stuff, it is often going to knock out the 
Cube Manager. So uh, you'll notice it's not doing a whole lot. We're just going to go ahead and close that. Uh, the net failed to start. Internal error. Error. Uh, failed to create a new domain. Sysnet. Okay, that's fine. It's going to reopen the Cube Manager. Let's go ahead and try and restart this again. Now, hopefully, it should start this time. It did. And let's go ahead and restart our Sys firewall as well. Now that we have USB ports available in SysNet, now when we go ahead and plug our phone in, and I went ahead and plugged it in, you'll see that we have uh, a device available here. I'm going to turn on USB tethering. And as I turn on USB tethering, it should give us the connection. It looks as though the Sys firewall is not turned on yet. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so now you can see it's established Wired Connection 2, and Wired Connection 2 happens to be the one that is connected to the Razer 2 phone. So now I am uh, using my internet off of my phone, connected via USB tethering, and you are going to accomplish this by making sure that you are uncoupling the particular USB ports from the sys usb and recoupling them to the net now the first time i did this i connected it to the um what i think is the slower usb port so i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick internet speed test i know on my phone i'm getting about a around a, a a 10 or a 20 download in my particular location that was when i was not inside of my faraday <laughs> caged van so let's go ahead and run an internet speed test and see if it's actually pulling good speeds this time. So um, I was having the issue again where uh, USB tethering was not giving me good speeds, but I think that's because my USB ports are the, I was connecting it to the slow one in my test and I've reversed it for this actual video. So it looks like we are probably gonna get better speeds. There we are. So we are getting the same speeds that I'm getting pulling in off of the phone manually by a USB tether inside of cubes. Again, I'm going to reiterate, this is going to increase a little bit of insecurity because if I were to plug some other device into the USB port that I'm allowing the network to have, then what's going to happen there is that device is going to be exposed to the internet. So use caution when you're doing this and make sure you are uh, make sure that you are only utilizing the USB drives that you need. I would recommend in this setup, instead you should use the wireless hotspot on your phone if you can uh, instead. But in the event you do not have that option, this will allow you to, to do that. So then what we're going to do here um, at the end of the video, I'm, I'm not going to show you how to reverse the process. It's the same principle. Just shut off the SysNet, shut off the SysUSB, remove the USB from SysNet, add the USB back to SysUSB, restart all three of these machines. The firewall is connected to the net. That's why we need to restart the firewall. And that's going to enable you to uh, return your system back to how it was. Because, well, there are times I do want to uh, use my phone in a tethering mode. Oftentimes I just use it in wireless mode if I happen to need my phone for internet at all. It works well and that will always work by default in your uh, cube system. So hopefully this has been beneficial and thank you to the person who uh, asked the comments so I could get in here and play around with my computer at a coffee shop a little bit and uh, figure this out for you and hopefully um, that will help you out. Thanks for watching this video. Have a look over at the website at switchtolinux.com, and we have some support links over there. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.